third spike at the end of 2012, going into 2013, and now everybody's really talking about it. And at the same time, there's also just tons of data out there and available to us that we can actually start using as part of development. Um, there's data in web analytics tools. Most of the free stuff in web analytics tools is far more robust than even the paid tools were a couple years ago. Um, and along with that, there's also data that's available internally within organizations. Even the smallest organizations I work with these days have a CRM with lots of information about who their customers are. So it's no surprise that people are looking at going, okay, there's all this talk about data and there's all this data around us, so how about we use it to make our code better and to make our applications and our websites and whatever it is we're building better? Except, despite all this popularity, hardly anybody's really putting any of this data to work. Studies show that only 15% of Fortune 500 companies are utilizing their data. Just over a third of startups aren't even considering it. And moving away from big data to just any form of data, other studies show that only 8% of companies are actually putting it to work. Um, and of the companies who are, only half are somewhat successful in doing so. So the problem here and what's really going on is that people are talking about data, but they're not using it. Instead, they're using opinions. Um, and I know that I've personally seen this in lots of situations where I'll go in and work with clients and do all this research and do all this analysis and say, here's these really great recommendations you ought to do, and then they get ignored. And there's justifications for why people use opinions instead, right? There's uh, one of my favorites is, oh, you know what, those recommendations, those just aren't in line with our brand. It's, it may be what is the right thing to do technically, but, you know, we, we don't feel that it's the right thing for us. Or, you know what, despite what your data says, that that's where we should invest our time or our budget, those are things that are just too technically hard. We can't possibly do that. Or there's also the excuse of, you know what, our customers just won't like that. Sure, you looked at the data. Sure, you maybe talked to a few customers to collect that data, but they don't like that. We know who our customers are. Our opinions know better than the data. And the reality here is that we're dealing with complicated situations. So ignoring data in favor of opinions, it's not always the best approach to take. We have to think about technical considerations, we have to think about the business considerations, and we have to think about user considerations. So this isn't easy stuff, and making decisions solely based on opinions isn't really going to cut it or get us to the best possible outcome. So we need to get to the real problem here. You know, why are so few companies really using data? We all know it's important. We all know really great things that you can do with it. Many of us have probably even seen some of that firsthand, but it just isn't getting used as effectively as it ought to be. So instead of spending our time together today talking about all the great things that you could possibly do with data, uh, let's actually talk about the real problem that's going on and how you and your clients and your employers and your teams can really solve it. And that question comes down to this. Why isn't data being used to its fullest potential? Why do opinions win out over data? And what is it really going to take to get our teams, our employers, our clients, ourselves, to really start using data as part of a decision-making process? So no matter what company size you're in, no matter how much time or money you have or how much time or money you don't have available, we need to figure out a way to work in some amount of data into your day-to-day -day process. And that's really my goal with this talk, is I want to share with you um, a plan and a way that you can start doing this uh, within your company, whatever size company you're in. Now, the biggest problem I see people run into uh, when people start utilizing data and they start thinking about this is they want to go with a data-driven approach. And it's usually this big, complex thing that they're going to put together. Um, and on the surface, it sounds really good, right? The you know, idea behind data-driven is forget those opinions. We'll just look at the numbers, and that will tell us what we need to do. You know, I don't have to bother figuring that out myself. I don't have to bother uh, you know, looking at what I need to develop. The numbers will tell me what I need to do, which sounds easy and almost sounds foolproof right? to get those opinions out of the way. But the reality is, is this data-driven approach doesn't really work all that well. And I think the best way to 
show why the data-driven approach doesn't work all that well is to go through an example. So this is an example I've seen numerous times on a lot of different websites working with lots of different clients over the years. And there are lots of sets of data from tests I've run, this one's from HubSpot up on the screen, that show pretty conclusively that if you get rid of navigation uh, from a page or a series of pages, you can end up increasing conversions, which is cool, right? We all want to help our clients improve conversions, but uh, the general idea behind this being that if you remove navigation uh, from the page, you're going to end up uh, with more conversion simply because it's less distracting without the navigation. There's also something to the idea that by removing the navigation, you're also speeding up the website, right? You're taking away a lot of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever it may be, and that in turn is going to lead to a faster website which could lead to more conversions. So the data-driven approach then is pretty clear. What you need to do is you need to remove all the navigation from your website, right? Kill off that navigation, who needs it anyway? Um, and I've actually had clients who do this and they try to get rid of all the navigation on their website. Now the good news is, is that this data-driven process was right, right? They got more conversions. The problem is, is that what the data didn't tell them is that they also ended up getting lower customer retention rates, more customer dissatisfaction. Why? Well, what the numbers didn't show is that by removing the navigation, you also really frustrated the people who had to come to this website. You took away their control, you took away some flexibility for them, and in doing so, of course, you're going to you know, result in lower customer retention, you're going to result in more dissatisfaction. So the lesson here, I think, is this. If you let the numbers, like the conversion rates in that example, just blindly drive your decisions, that might sound like a good idea, but it might also lead you toward something bad, like you know, more customers leaving. And that's not to say don't use data, right? You definitely want to use data, and you want to find a way to use it effectively. But if some data that you're working with clearly shows you that there's this path you ought to take, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to follow that path. Your opinions, your expertise, other ideas, other data points have to factor in here as well. So I think the chief scientist at Accenture Technologies said it pretty well when he said that the improper use of data can lead to poor decisions made with high confidence. And that's the real problem that we're trying to figure out how to solve. So with all that said, opinions are problematic, right? We don't want to rely on those 100%. But we also know that it's easy to just look at one data point and potentially cause some real problems. So what we need to do is we need to find a way to balance data and opinions. That way we can avoid making, uh, you know, can avoid making poor decisions, even those that we're potentially making with high confidence. And that requires a different framework to use in approaching uh, data. And this approach starts with a shift in how we think about data. It's not a data-driven process, it's more of thinking of data as the navigator of our decisions. And that means that, yeah, we're of course going to look at the numbers, but we're also going to factor in our intuition, our opinions, and our experience as well. So going back to that example of the navigation and should we remove it or not, you know, when you look at that and you say, okay, sure, removing the navigation might end up increasing conversions, you've worked on websites. You know that, hey, wait a minute, the navigation serves a valid purpose. There is a reason to have navigation. So with that experience in mind, your intuition might be, before we go and remove the navigation, maybe there's some other things we need to check first beyond just looking at conversion rates. So what does this data-navigated wor world really look like that balances opinions and data? It isn't all that complex and it doesn't need to be all that intricate. That's actually the point is we want to try and come up with something simple, right, that we can use because so few companies are using it right now. So it's really just four steps. First, we want to know what question we need to answer. Second, we need to know how that question relates to different perspectives or different ways of looking at it. Third, we actually need to collect data. And then fourth, we need to make a decision. So let's go through those in a bit more detail, starting with asking the right question. And this process sounds pretty simple, but I've actually found this is the step where people 
make the biggest mistakes. Because if you ask the wrong question, you're going to end up collecting the wrong data and that's going to lead you toward making a bad decision. And I think the reason people struggle with this step is that there's this rush to just get to the data and start looking at things and start making changes because that's the fun part of the process. But before we can get to the data, we need to know what question we're really asking. So that way we know what data we even need to collect and what kinds of decisions we even need to make and what kinds of changes should result from that decision. So let's walk through that page and navigation example I was talking about before and figure out, okay, what question are we asking here, right? If you talk to your boss or you talk to your client about this page, they're gonna say, you know what, the question we're trying to answer on this page is just how do I get more conversions? But we know that's the wrong question to ask because if we ask the question that way, we're only looking at one data point, right? We're only looking at conversions. And if we only look at that one data point, that's going to lead us toward removing the navigation, which we know could potentially be problematic for the company longer term. So we want a better question here, and a better question to ask is one that lets us look at more than just one data point, right? We want to look at something beyond just conversions. And that question is probably something along the lines of what's the best way to develop this page? Right? This question is really broad. By asking the question this way, we can look at conversions, because those are important, but we could also look at other things as well, like are we going to frustrate people when we remove the navigation from our page? Now, when you go through this question, you know, and you talk about, yeah, we need to ask a bigger question here, not everybody's going to agree on what that bigger question is, and that's really okay if they don't, because the goal here isn't to get everybody to agree, yep, that's the question we're asking. Rather, it's to get everybody to agree that there is a bigger question, that there is more to be looked at than just some narrowly focused question about conversions or whatever else. So now that we have that bigger question, uh, the next step is really to break it down and determine what are some different ways of looking at this question, different perspectives that we could have on this question. So to keep on with that example of our page, we want to know what are those different perspectives or pieces of putting this page together. And one of those is definitely about conversions, right? This is the business case and it's almost always going to apply because somehow, some way, we have to have a return on investment on the code that we're building, right? And whether that, you know, depending on the nature of your organization, that might be sales, leads, donations, signups, uh, applications, whatever you care about for your client or for your employer. But along with that, we also care about what users think on this page as well. Um, you know, whether that's, do they come to this page and get what they want and what they need out of it? Are they able to utilize it on whatever device they happen to be on? And then there might be another perspective here of, yeah, what is the technical reality that we're dealing with? How does the navigation work on different devices? What impact does removing the navigation potentially have? All of that really starts to influence this question of what's the best way to develop the page? And as you go through this, it's easy to come up with lots of different perspectives and lots of different ways of slicing that question apart and looking at it. But the point isn't to look at the question from every possible perspective. Rather, it's just to be able to see this question from a few different perspectives or a few different angles. So to bring all that together back to this example we've been talking about, you know, the bigger question is what's the best way to develop this page? And that you know, question breaks down to a business perspective, which is saying, okay, what's the best way to develop this page to achieve more conversions? What's the best way to develop this page to achieve higher user satisfaction in the case of the user perspective? or in the technical perspective, really about what's the best way to develop this page more efficiently. And now that we have that put together, we can move on to the next step, which is actually collecting some of the data. And the first problem that happens here is this. It is really easy to collect way more data than you actually need um, as part of the process. And I am totally guilty of this problem time and time again. But as you start thinking about collecting the data and actually gathering all the information you need to answer your question, it's key to remember that the idea isn't to collect everything that you possibly need. 
Rather, the idea is just to collect a few things that actually matter, right? Just so long as you can get a couple of those data points and you can move along to a decision more quickly, that's the overall point here. And another pitfall to avoid is that it's easy to ignore the data that you already have within your organization, right? It's tempting and easy and really fun, especially if you're a bit of a data nerd, to just start collecting new data and play around with new tools and new ways of researching things. But if you take a moment to look at the data that you already have within your organization, even if it's not completely perfect, that can save you a lot of time and a lot of effort. And another pitfall I see people running into is they don't always collect a good mix of quantitative and qualitative information. Right? They skew either toward the numbers or they skew too far toward getting all the stories about who people are. But in order to get really meaningful information and to better answer our questions, we want to collect both. That's the more well-rounded answer here. So with all that said, how do we actually collect some of this data? And the truth is that there are so many different options for how you can do that. There's lots of data out there. So there's no way that I could talk about one data point that would work in every situation for every question you're going to ask. But instead, I just want to walk through some examples and really just give you some ideas. Starting with quantitative data, which this is the stuff that's pretty easy to work with and find within your organization. So there might be a lot of information within analytics tools, uh, whether that's for web or mobile usage. There's also a lot of quantitative information about products or about services, you know, whether that's what features are used or how frequently something is used, uh, how, you know, what the churn rates look like, how frequently people come back to use it, whatever it might be, that's all important stuff to know about who these people are that are using the apps or the websites that we're building. And then certainly there's a lot of data within server logs. Right, that can give you even more details about exactly how and who is using your app or website. And then there's also a lot of numbers and quantitative information uh, within customer support. Right, How many customer support issues are open after a particular launch or how many of those issues are now resolved? And then you also have your employer's favorite number. Right, sales. How much money came in the door? And if you're not a sales-driven organization, maybe that's uh, signups or donations, whatever that bottom line number is, that's a key one to factor into the usage of data. And there's also a lot of qualitative data available as well within your organization. Right? These are the stories about who our customers or who our users are, and they usually exist in some form. Uh, depending on the size of your organization, you might have user testing or surveys or interviews available with some of those users or some of those customers. And that's great information to have to test out your website, to test out your application, and see, yeah, what does somebody really think of this thing that you've built? But even if you can't do you know, user testing or interviews in person, there's online tools that can help you do this. And those are usually a little bit more cost effective. Uh, there are services like SurveyMonkey, Microworkers, Mechanical Turk, Usability Hub, usertesting.com, lots of others. Those are some of the better ones that I've found. But if you can't conduct those tests or if you can't do those online services, there's also a lot of people you can talk to within your organization who know who these people are. And one great resource that I've found are the sales teams. Um, sales reps, especially the, the good sales reps who actually can close a sale, um, are the ones to talk to because they really know something about who those customers are. Uh, they know what they want, they know what they need, they know what they're thinking. And that's information that you can use to factor into how you're going to build an app or how you're going to build a website. So the point of all of that isn't to say that that's all the different kinds of data that's out there, but is to say that you have lots of different data that you can look to and find within your organization already. Right? And the other thing to point out is that there's a good balance to be had between quantitative and qualitative. So as before, and I think it's worth repeating, you want to keep it really simple. Right, A little bit of data collected very quickly that can help you easily navigate toward a decision, that's going to be far better than spending months on end setting up some elaborate collection method or setting up some extensive test that's going to generate data that nobody will even remember why you collected it six months from now. So 
to make this a bit more practical, let's go through an example of collecting data uh, back on this page that we've been talking about. So trying to figure out, okay, what's the best way to develop this page, right? And we've got our three different perspectives. And for each of those perspectives, we want to find one or two data points that helps us understand what the best way to develop uh, that page is from that perspective. What is the best way to develop this page to increase conversions or increase satisfaction? And we'll start with the business case. So we know that right, this perspective is all about conversions, so one data point that would be really great to collect is conversions. So using Google Analytics, we could look at the goal report and see how many people completed whatever the goal happens to be over a particular time frame. And to help clarify the business intent, we can also look at this by the channel or source that led people toward that conversion. And along with that, we could also look at something like heat maps, uh, which would help us understand where are people looking on this page? Where are they scrolling to? Where are they moving their mouse? And maybe we find when we look at that that our conversion call to action is over here, but people are actually looking over here. And we know that that's not great from a conversion standpoint. And then along with that, we can also look at something like form analytics to see how are people moving through our form? Where are those drop-off points? And how is that influenced by any changes that we happen to be making to this page? So then the next perspective of this question is about the user's thoughts, right? We want to increase user satisfaction. And user testing, like we talked about, can be one way to help understand that. Um, but if you're not able to do in-person or remote user testing or maybe alongside that, another way to get at this data would be to look at something called prior step analysis. So in the case of this example page, let's say that you know, people come to uh, our page that we're trying to figure out how to develop from a Google search result. So Google search is the prior step. So we could go into Google Search Console and we could see what are the search terms that led people toward this page. And by knowing what those search terms are, we can start to figure out, okay, what um, were people thinking when they typed that in? What were they expecting to find? And how well does our page deliver on that for people? And if the prior step maybe isn't a Google search result, but another page on our site, we could also go into Google Analytics and look at something like a previous page path report. And every analytics tool tends to have something like this. And again, this gives us that same idea of, OK, if people came from this page, what were they then thinking about? What were they expecting from the page we're trying to develop? And maybe a more quantitative way to look at this would be the time spent on the site or the exit rate. So the exit rate right, is a measure of how many people left our page. And so maybe with the navigation in place, our exit rate was 40%. But after we remove the navigation, we see that exit rate spike to 60% or 70%. Well, if we go from 40 to 60 or 70%, that's probably an indication that our users who are on this page are not all that happy. They're probably a little bit frustrated, which is why they're leaving. So our goal here is to have a few different data points for each of the perspectives of the larger question that we're asking, right? I could spend this entire session just talking about all the different data points you could collect to understand any one of those perspectives, right? There's a lot out there that you could collect, but the point of using data isn't just to have a lot of numbers, it's not to have a lot of cool Excel charts, even though that's fun, but what the real point is is to get toward making a decision. And that's the fourth step of this process. And on this fourth step, unless you're a team of one with unlimited power to make all the decisions yourself, this is where using the data can start to get really messy because you now have to share it with other people. And when you share that data with other people, there's a strong temptation that they just want to dive into the numbers and start figuring out what's going on and figure out what decision to make. But before you can let anybody look at the numbers, you need to step back with them and remind them that there is that bigger question, that there are the different perspectives. And the reason I say that is that it's easy for the people making the decision to only look at one perspective, right? We in this room might all care about this perspective over here, but your client or your employer might care more about this perspective over there, and somebody else involved might care about this other perspective. 
And everybody's right, all those perspectives matter, but we want to start our decision-making process by making sure everybody at least can acknowledge that multiple perspectives exist. And the reason I say that I think is pretty well illustrated by this example that we've been talking about. So in this example, right, we've collected our data and you know, we know that the best way to develop this page in order to increase conversions is to remove that navigation. But at the same time, we know that the best way to develop this page from a user perspective, right, to increase satisfaction is to keep the navigation in place. So there's a conflict here. And when the data conflicts, there's a strong desire for companies just to chuck the data out the window and really fall back on opinions, right? And they, they just go with probably whatever opinion they had in the first place or the opinion that best aligns with whatever perspective they happen to care about. Either way, data gets ignored. Now, other companies in this situation uh, fall into the trap of what I refer to as the holy grail response. And this is where people go on this quest to find the one data point that will clearly tip the decision in favor of this perspective or that perspective. And they're looking for something to break that tie. But they rarely find it, right? Lots of reports get generated, lots of numbers get pulled, but they're not really using data and they're not really benefiting from it because they're not making a decision. So I'm guessing we've all been in situations like this. And in these situations, data starts to look like a waste, no matter how wonderful and how cool that data happens to be. And with these problems in mind, you can understand why so few companies are really using their data. So what we need is a better way of determining what perspective do we rely on when two of them conflict, right? And that requires knowing what perspective of the question we're asking, that we're working on, really matters the most. And the way you do that is you need to work with the decision makers to figure out where the question fits as part of the bigger whole of the business. And the way that I like to go through this with clients is to figure out uh, you know, where things fit as part of the bigger whole of the business is to use a visual framework. And that visual framework that I found is the most helpful is the funnel. And this is just a basic business funnel, right? At the top, we're trying to get people aware of our company. Once they're aware, we're trying to build interest and get people to really desire what we do. And if they desire us enough, they'll actually take some kind of action, make a purchase, convert. Then we have a customer that we have to support. And hopefully that customer becomes a long-term loyal advocate. So when you talk about whatever question it is that you're trying to answer, you need to be clear on what level of the funnel or what part of the business you're working at. What's the point of that page that you're trying to develop in the case of this example? Right? And figuring that out is really where your opinions and your intuition and your expertise really comes into play. So at the top, the point is to get people's attention and make them aware of who you are and make sure that they like you. So at this level of the funnel, it's maybe a brand perspective or maybe a marketing perspective that really matters. Certainly the user perspective might matter here as well. But as you reach the next levels of the funnel, this is really where that user perspective really starts to matter, right? We want to know what people are thinking, what people are feeling about our page, if they're interested, if they desire what we're doing. And at the action stage of the funnel, this is where it becomes about the business case, right? Conversions are what matter here. We have people who desire what we do and we need to get them to actually make a decision, take some kind of action and potentially purchase something from our company. And then once that person's on board and they're actually a customer, then it's almost a product perspective of the data that we need to look at, right? And we want to work toward whatever the data tells us we need to do to make people loyal and make them advocates for our company. So once you've gone through the funnel, you'll know what set of data really matters to answer the question that you're asking. And at that stage, and really only at that stage, should you and the decision makers look at the data set and make your decision about what you're going to do. So in the case of that example, right, where we're trying to figure out well, what's the best way to develop this page with or without navigation, well, if we go through the funnel with our decision makers and we decide, you know what, this page that we're trying to develop, this is all really about user satisfaction, right? It's all about that interest and desire level of the funnel. Well, then we know that what we're going to rely on is the data from the user perspective. 
So there's no conflict with the data. We're just going to say, okay, we're relying on the data from the user perspective, and that told us to keep the navigation in place. But on the flip side, if we go through the funnel with our decision makers and we say, okay, where does this page fit? And we decide, you know what, it really fits at that action stage of the funnel. Well, then great. We know that we're going to look at the business perspective. Again, no conflict exists and we know what to do and we know that we'll keep the navigation. So to wrap this up, I mean, there's a ton out there about data and everything that you can do with it. But the truth is you don't have to try for something huge right away. What I'd encourage all of you to do uh, after you get back from this conference is just to look at the projects that you're working on and really go through this process. If it helps, this worksheet will walk you through the steps that we covered today. But above all else, I think the big thing to remember is there's a way to use data and still keep it simple, right? Your goal is merely just trying to find that balance between data and opinions so that way you can make a better informed decision. All right. Well, thank you for being here with me.